Hi, today I'm going to be doing a partial review and teardown of this Blackweb mechanical gaming keyboard. I'm also going to be replacing some uh, key switches. Um, it comes with uh, some kind of Cherry MX Blue clones. I think they're called the Tamu or something like that. Here's a look at the lighting. There's some um, LEDs behind the keys and they don't change color they're just a consistent color so we have you know red some green yellow blue uh, purple and white LEDs one thing I noticed is I powered this uh, with like a 5 volt supply and it didn't light up and I plugged my phone in and it did so it looks like you need kind of like a data connection just to kind of um, set the uh, lighting into motion. Here's a look at the back. We can see the model number. Not too much branding. Kind of nice in my opinion. So here's another look at the lighting display, kind of like the, probably the default when you plug it in, kind of like a demo. It's pretty bright. Um, there are different settings. Here's a look at one of the switches with the key cap removed. There's kind of like a clear housing, so the light uh, is able to shine through quite clearly. Uh, pretty bright, pretty nice. Key caps have like a clear plastic. Um, mold inserted into them. Here's a demo of uh, just how it sounds. Alright, so now to take it, start to take it apart, we need to remove all the keycaps. So I'm going to go do that. And underneath we see all the blue switches. And it also reveals some screws that we have to remove. So a whole bunch of little screws. And those hold the kind of the back and the front together. So I'll go ahead and remove those. So I'll go ahead and remove all of these screws off camera. And now we're down to the last screw. It's a whole bunch of them. And it's not a machine screw or anything. Screw. Um, it's basically just uh, kind of like, you know, a wood screw just digs into plastic plastic standoffs. Not really made to be separated apart too many times, if at all. So I was pretty surprised. Full size um, PCB, microcontroller, QFP package. Um, I was expecting maybe a blob package or something really cheap. I'm sure it's a cheap microcontroller. But um, started on request. So we have the, the bottom of the keyboard, just a plastic, nothing special about it. You can remove the uh, wrist rest if you want. So pretty nice uh, PCB, actually. I was maybe expecting something cheap. I wasn't really sure what they would do for a $50 keyboard, but full-size PCB. You can see the microcontroller, it's a BYK801. I couldn't really find any information on it. Some hints as to that uh, it was like a backlight controller for the RGBs. And you can see those uh, metal uh, standoffs basically um, go through and twist and that, that's one of the ways that hold the uh, aluminum um, backing to the keys to this PCB. The other way is uh, the actual keys themselves hold this metal backing in. So here 
I have marked the keys that I want to replace with the X's and this is the kind of first attempt. All right, I have two soldering irons, so I'm gonna try to melt both of them and push them out. So this whole desoldering process actually turned out to be a bit more painful than I had imagined. Um, I decided maybe I would use my um, solder sucker, but really those, in my experience, if you have these kind of pump kind, don't really remove all of the solder. They can do a pretty good job, but you know it's still kind of can be a pain. Plus. The keys actually themselves clip into the metal backing so they're not just gonna fall out there's kind of like a you know a clip in that way too so um, kind of messed around with a few different ways to do this I did settle on the two soldering irons as the, the easiest way for me uh, kind of using like a tweezers method, but I recommend if you do have a tweezer soldering tweezers That's the way to go if you have like kind of a desoldering iron that would definitely be the way to go um, But I'll just kind of speed through this process maybe show you some of the highlights of the ways that worked So here I'm just removing some solder from the through hole parts Just add a little bit heat it up use a solder sucker suck it off opens up the through hole uh, footprint pretty well and just a quick look at the two switches um, the footprints pretty much exactly the same so we can just pop it right in there And the easy part comes soldered in. And that's about it. So here we're just looking at the front of the board with the switch removed at the LED right there. It's probably like a 1206 or maybe a 2010 LED package. So this is kind of like what I, the method I kind of um, settled on to desolder these. Um, basically just holding my irons like a tweezers and with a screwdriver pushing on the uh, bottom of the cap. Um, yeah, not, not the easiest or greatest method, but one that worked. In a second, you'll hear switch fall out. There it goes. So now I'm just having a look at the switches. Um, just kind of a comparison. And one thing that happened with one of the last switches is there are these thick kind of post covers and one actually just pulled off. So if we look at the browns that I bought online, they don't have any of these post covers. So I'm not sure um, what the point of them exactly is. Maybe just something in the process. But um, they're not actually soldered to the actual switch. So they're like pressured in there. So um, 
they probably s I'm guessing they probably solder those outside posts in and then push the switches in afterwards so as you can see they're the same there once I remove that so that would kind of almost hint at the possibility of not even having to desolder these switches at all but maybe even being able to push them out I'm not sure if that's possible um, I have the keyboard back together now so I'm not about to try it um, but it's certainly worth a look since the switches themselves are not actually soldered in so maybe maybe online there's somebody who knows more about that so this is just basically a demonstration of the clickiness of the switches after the whole process is done And here we have a demonstration of the lighting effects of the keyboard. There's a few custom um, key lighting settings you can make, um, kind of just illuminate certain keys that you want illuminated. And I'll just run through briefly a couple of the other ones. It's all detailed in the manual, um, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Overall, I've been actually pretty happy with the keyboard. It feels pretty robust. And even after opening it up, I'm actually more impressed with it. I thought maybe they would cheap out on the interior, but it's pretty solidly constructed. PCB is pretty nice and uh, just seems a little bit more higher quality than what I would have expected from just a kind of a possibly like a Walmart brand. So hope you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask in the comments and let me know your experiences with the keyboard.